what is going on everybody and welcome back to another mtg digital altar i hope you guys are doing exceptionally well today we get to take a look at a suggestion coming from Kamisama uh, all the way over on Twitter who suggested that we take a look at Tetsuko Umizawa, uh, a beautiful card with beautiful art by Randy Vargas from Dominaria, a fantastic commander that apparently Kamisama really enjoys. Uh, and so we wanted to see what we could do with it. Now, before we jump in, I just want to say if you do have a suggestion for us, if you've got a commander you'd like to see, any kind of card you'd like to see, please let us know in the comments down below. That would be fantastic. You are certainly welcome to call us out on Twitter as well. Uh, the goal of this series is to have fun, highlight some artwork, and hopefully come out on the other end with some beautiful altars. Uh, this one I am really excited about. The dimensions that Randy put in his artwork is absolutely phenomenal. Uh, so really excited to jump into this one. But without further ado, let's go ahead and jump in. All right, so here we are in Photoshop. And again, I just wanted to, to point out, Randy did a phenomenal job with the perspective in particular in this piece of art. We see this beautiful kind of diagonal framing uh, here of Tetsuka Umizawa. And what I thought I would do is actually a relatively simple trick, but one that kind of combines the frame into the artwork itself. Now to do that, there's a couple of important things you need to keep in mind that we'll look at as we go through. The altar has already been created. We're gonna kind of reverse engineer it and just kind of talk through it and see why we did what we did. So uh, the first thing I will show is that I wanted to bring in the art. This is always a great step one if you are looking to do any kind of alters. If you're really trying to highlight the artwork, find the highest res image of, you, of that artwork that you can, bring it in, and just see what you can do with it. Play around with the composition a little bit. Uh, again, my, my idea was to put the frame back into the image with uh, Tetsuka Umizawa basically above it, uh, and where they're peering through this kind of doorway that has been opened up, I really wanted to pick a great place to put that frame. Uh, what's really easy to do, uh, and I used to do this a lot, is to, to place the frame in there and then just kind of remove it out from wherever you feel like it makes sense. And sometimes you can get away with it, it works great. Definitely not necessarily an issue, it can be a creative decision. But what I have found over the years is picking essentially a plane, whether that be foreground, background, wherever, and make sure that anywhere you are adding the frame back in, it adheres to that rule that you have set for yourself. I knew I wanted the frame kind of in this background area, which meant here and basically anywhere that the door or the character or the, the object of the, uh, the artwork is, isn't going to have the frame over it. And so we needed to reverse that out. So I basically took my time and really went through and tried to be very meticulous about what I'm doing here and get everything kind of evened out around the edges, even to the extent of finding there was a little little piece of the background right here that I wanted to make sure that I got. So uh, I went back, reversed in all of the frame that I liked, uh, and this has ended up basically really, really nice in my opinion. So to, to sell this a little bit more though, which is kind of difficult to do sometimes, I wanted to make sure that I added a couple of little hints. So if you'll notice here, there's a bit of a glow. There's a, there was a bit of a glow uh, on the, the scarf itself that I really wanted to highlight and bring back in. So what I did first is I brought just a slight glow uh, from around that scarf right back on top of the frame again to really sell that dimension. Uh, and then did the exact same thing with a little bit of a blue glow. Now I know it's very faint, but the idea is not for it to be the most, uh, you know, it, the most eye-catching thing. The idea is to really help it sell that this piece of the image is above the frame. Uh, and so that was essentially what we did there to help, again, sell it. Now, to finalize that selling, you'll notice there's a few little places uh, where, where some of the line work, some of these little glowing kind of pieces go above the frame and I didn't have the best way, I'll be honest, either because of my lack of Photoshop skills or because I just was having trouble with it. Uh, I found a different way to kind of cover that up a little bit. And these little yellow dots, uh, there's different colors actually, but I pulled in a lot of the yellow. Uh, I essentially added in in different areas and if you look right here, you'll notice if I, if I turn off that layer, you see it kind of go away. Uh, if I turn it back on, you see it pop back in. And I essentially pulled this yellow color, used a very, very faint uh, brush uh, with a very, very low hardness level, and essentially just picked a couple of places where it really highlighted that composition. Again, there's a couple up here, there's one here, just to oversell the fact that these little pieces, these little energy elements are straight above the frame. Uh, and with 
without anything else, this is essentially the finished product. This is an absolutely beautiful piece. Again, Randy Vargas did a very, very beautiful job with this piece. I wanted to highlight that and really bring in that perspective. I thought that was really going to be the key. Uh, Kamisama, I hope you enjoyed this one. Thank you so much for the suggestion. Again, if anybody else has a suggestion for a proxy you would like to see, share it below. I would love to give it a shot. This is a great series. You guys seem to really be enjoying it. So thank you guys so much for all the amazing support. And I will see you hopefully very soon in another Digital Altar video.